Hello web design professionals. Here is another video that is going to teach you how to build the perfect landing page so that you or your business or the uh, business that you are building the website for is gonna get the maximum amount of sales by basically designing a landing page based on conversion. I've scoured the internet for the best statistics and facts and put together a clonable Figma guide and Webflow template so that you can follow along and build the ultimate landing page. Now I know we've all been there. We've been with inside of our favorite design software looking to build a landing page. We either don't know what to do and we get stuck or we end up throwing a load of things together, developing a page that ultimately gets no clicks. Now a landing page is one of the most important pages on your website because it is going to basically showcase to a lot of people and you have to meet a lot of people's requests so that you can get them to click on your CTA. So what I'm gonna do is take you over to my template and here we are within Figma. You're gonna be able to get this download link within the bio below. And what we are going to do is come over to the landing page tutorial. Now, this is set up utilizing FinSuite's structure guide. So that means that um, you can actually copy these from Figma into Webflow using the Figma to Webflow plugin. And all of these components are set up for that. This landing page tutorial is just gonna explain what each section is and then of course you can build your own landing pages in this section here. There are a few sections that we're gonna look at today. There is the navigation, the hero, the problem and solution, the benefits, the features, testimonials, the FAQ, the call to action and then finally the footer. These are an absolute minimum that you wanna be adding to your homepage or landing page so that you can get the optimal conversion rate start off with the navigation now this is a component that we do not want to overcomplicate because this is something that a user uses on a daily basis we want to copy what the generic trends are now of course you can design it in a beautiful way but the structure should always remain relatively the same and what we want to do there is on the left always add your logo of course sometimes people center it but this is a very generic nav that is quick for the user to get around the site this logo needs to link back to the home page which is this page itself or if this is another landing page for selling another service of course link this back to the home page now we want to have not too many links we want to have the core links so for example this is a design company we want to have an about services features pricing portfolio and contact now of course if you have more pages than this you want to uh, distill these into a drop down the reason that we don't want to have too many links is we don't want to confuse or over give give the user too many options to look at because ultimately we want a cta which is the button here to be the paramount thing that the user recognizes throughout the site so the CTA here, you're gonna see this throughout the sections, needs to be the same. Now you can have a secondary CTA, but you have to have a predominant reason why you're gonna be using this. I would, for your first time building a land page, or if you don't really know what your CTA should be, just keep this simple and keep it the same one throughout the site. The reason for this is because the more you show a user the same thing psychologically, they are going to want to press it and they understand your website and what you're trying to make them do a little bit more. Now, the next most important thing, I would say actually the most important thing is the hero section. Now, generally people spend up to eight seconds on a homepage before clicking off. That is from Microsoft, that is a, uh, a serious study. So within eight seconds, you want to get across to your user what you do and what value you are going to provide. Now, here you can see I've broken down what you want to include, so the heading. This isn't a place where you say, hello, I'm Kyle, or hello, I'm a design agency. This is where you say what value you will provide to the user. So for example, if I'm a design agency, I will 
increase your increase your engagement online. I will increase your sales. I am not talking about myself, but I am saying to the potential client how they're going to benefit from my services. So you do want to get across what you do, but more importantly, you want to get across the value of what you do for the client. So make it more about them, less about yourself. Second most important part is going to be the paragraph underneath. So you want to explain the product or service in further detail. For example, in my case, it would be web design, graphic design and marketing, and then explain why that's going to help the user and why you do it well. The next most important thing, like I said, is the call to action. And this should be a time sensitive thing. So it should be saying, get in contact now, download this free PDF now. Basically, you want to make it very active and proactive for the user to click on this. And you want to explain what it does next. So don't just be generic, don't just say click here for more. You want to say what the button's doing. So click here to get a free consultation, something as powerful as that. Now, what's been shown to increase conversion rates um, a lot is by adding an additional value point underneath the CTA. So this might be, for example, if my CTA is get a free consultation call, this could be no hassle free, completely free, 30 minutes, quick session, something like that, something short, sweet, that's just gonna entice the user to click the button. Now, studies have shown that a user will actually spend up to six seconds looking at the image. So the image that you have here, you want this to be very impactful. And the way you do that, you don't just show the servers or product you are uh, selling. Uh, what you do is you show the user using that product. So if I'm a web design company, I don't just say show a website, nobody cares about that. You show a person showing their friends an amazing website that's just been built for them by your company. So you're putting the user in the shoes of the image and it's gonna psychologically make them think that you are working on their side. And you wanna scatter them images across the site, by the way. Now the next um, powerful section you wanna add is the problem and solution. So we want to empathize emph with your audience and show you care about providing a valuable solution to their problem. So this is just like in the heading, what we wanna do is speak about more what we're gonna provide for the user rather than what we do. A lot of people get this wrong and they write this in about us section saying where you came from, what we do. Nobody cares about that. The user wants to know first and foremost how you're gonna solve their problem. And how do we do that? Have an engaging heading and then next you wanna say, you wanna explain the problem the user experiencing. So for example, uh, for a design agency, generic designs making your brand blend in. Are your logos the same as everybody else's? Are you boring? Are, is, are you finding it hard to be uh, more creative? So that is the problem the user might be experiencing. Now, you wanna give an example of the real life problem. So for example, your new website looks like countless others causing your audience to overlook your unique offerings. Or for example, you are not getting the conversion rate you want. So you are really going into the problem that the user is experiencing. The next and most important is the solution to the problem. So here we have a creative team cross custom designs that capture your brand's essence, helping you stand out and thrive. Again, look at the, the power of putting everything on the user, the person that is reading the content, your customer. Again, we can have a, a video would be good here of you speaking to the audience or an image of a problem being solved. Now, underneath that, probably one of the most important uh, sections out of this, apart from the hero and the problem solution, are the benefits. Now, don't get this wrong. Benefits are not features. And I'm gonna explain what features are next. So benefits are not features, benefits focus on the positive outcomes that your customers will experience. So for example, how will this benefit create a positive outcome? Boost your brand's visibility and credibility, cred credibility sorry, credibility with our eye-catching custom-made designs tailored to resonate with your target audience. Now, what we said here is that they're gonna benefit from increased visibility, and then they're gonna benefit from increased credibility. So you can use as many benefits as you want for this, but generally, I like to structure it like this. I like to write a short, well, a very quick one-liner explaining the benefit, 
then I want to have a paragraph explaining more in detail and then use icons and bullets to basically break them big benefits down into smaller ones. Because psychologically, people are going to be reading the main heading. They'll probably skip to the bullets because it's going to be more visually appealing. Then they'll come back to the main paragraph text uh, to see what you've got to say about it. Now, these are very powerful benefit sections uh, to getting conversion rates because you are putting all of your services in how it's going to help um, your user. Now, I suggest using three to five robust benefits and obviously having an image, bullet summary, paragraph and heading for each of these. Now, the features, like I said, these are not benefits and this is predominantly what you're probably going to see across a lot of websites. These are second to the benefits. You still want them, they're just not as important. So, for example, uh, if a benefit is how they're going to have increased uh, visibility a feature would be how we're going to increase that visibility it could be um, through responsive web design our team expertly creates websites that automatically adapt to various screen sizes and devices so these that are the technical pieces that, that the customer is going to get so for example in the case of an uh, apple so Apple headphones, they're going to make you enjoy life more because you're going to be able to listen to music on the go. A feature would be they have six hours battery life or whatever battery life they have. So you could see why there's more interest within the benefits because it puts the user in the shoes of using the product or service. So this is why for features we want to have more. We want five to 20 features. And I highly suggest having very engaging icons and short witty snappy features that are going to show how they're going to what they're going to get from your service or product now this is a powerful section to have and a lot of people get this wrong and some people will even go as far to fake their reviews and testimonials which of course is actually going to make it a lot worse uh, for your conversion rate because people just know nowadays they can tell when something's been written up so here are my best tips and tricks of, to uh, creating a testimonial section so a crucial tip is you should sh only show reviews that overcome customer objections so they should be very specific in what they are answering so try when you're getting testimonials testimonials from clients ask them questions of what they what they were scared of before going with your service or product and what they were amazed by what your product or service done and then put that in. So you're given genuine examples of how your product or service provided value to the customer. Now, if you can, the best way to do this is to get testimonial videos of the client. Now, if you can't get that, what we wanna do is obviously get a written testimonial and at least an image. Now, ask your clients before um, putting these up, but we want an image to go along with the text. And like I said, don't have generic test, uh, text like, oh, I'm so glad I found this company. Have something that basically says how you solve their problem. Now, another great thing to have is to sign up to something like Google My Business and collect your five-star reviews and then input these into the testimonials where obviously you can link them out to the real testimonials you have got. Very, very powerful stuff. The statistics behind testimonials and how um, people don't actually purchase a product or service without viewing them is significant so make sure you add this uh, section in now another great section and to speak on the uh, also of answering people's objections is the frequently asked questions the faqs this is also going to boost your seo because it's going to show up within the serps of a google listing but pretty much you want to have five to ten questions answering very precise pain problems and what I mean by that is if somebody is on the verge of wanting to buy your product or service, you need to get into the shoes of what is the thing that is holding them back from contacting you or purchasing your product. And then what you want to do is obviously write that as a question and then answer that specifically as if you are as, as if you are like speaking to the customer them, them, themselves. Now, what not a lot of people don't do is add a video um, along with this as well. A video of you speaking to the customer is gonna be so much more better than just having a bit of text. So I would add the text and also give a video to 
basically have that one step further of connection with the client before they sign up. Now, this is something that is obviously going to need to be spread throughout your site depending on your design, but um, I've put it straight after the FAQ because once you've answered their pain problems, you wanna definitely have a call to action, and this will probably be your last call to action, basically asking them to follow your CTA. The button that you have put around all of the site, the button that is up at your nav bar, the button that is in your home hero, and the button that's gonna be in your footer as well. So for example, in this one, I've given it as a design agency, we've got claim your free consultation now. Now again, what we wanna do is create a sense of urgency. So this is why we've got now, and this is why um, underneath the CTA headline, we've got this text that says, take advantage of a limited time offer to elevate your brand with our expert design services. We don't want people going backwards and forwards on the website, we want people to because once they've got to this uh, this section in your site they've obviously shown interest they obviously are on your page for a reason so we now want to engage with the user and give them reason to interact with it now so what you need here is of course something that explains what happens when the user clicks the cta the main heading of what they're going to get and then add in some more benefit bullets so for example if you want to, if you if you click now, you'll stand out from the competition. If you click the CTA, you're going to strengthen your brand identity. All of this good stuff that just, if somebody's like, oh, I don't know whether to sign up, they read something else and they go, okay, I'm going to do it. Now, top tip here, you don't have to add all of these, but this is this is another thing I would say to increase conversion. Add a guarantee underneath the button. So here I've got 100% satisfaction guarantee. We won't rest until you love your new design. So. All of this together, you want to spread this throughout the site and it is going to improve your engagement. But like I said, keep this at least beneath the frequently asked questions because once you've answered something, some, hopefully something here has ticked the right boxes to the client and then they're going to go down and be like, right, I'm ready to sign up now or I'm ready to get in contact. Now, another very important piece to the puzzle is the footer. Again, this, just like the nav, we don't want to overcomplicate this. We want to stick to a very generic structure. Now, now, of course, you can make the design elements very, elements very beautiful, but the things that you want on here is, of course, the logo that links back to the homepage. You want your CTA again, maybe a newsletter sign up, a secondary CTA. But then, of course, you want to have your page directory. You want to have the full sitemap here, so not um, anything that's in drop downs in your nav bar, you're going to have all laid out here. The reason for that is because a lot of people that come onto a web page, if they've been on your web page before, they might want to quickly sign up or quickly get in contact. So most people, they go onto the page and they scroll right down to the bottom and you want all of that information there so that they can quickly um, look further into your service or get in contact. So the next thing, of course, is uh, having your contact, your phone number, or any contact details you need them to get in touch with. Social handles, because this is gonna show social proof and make them more trustworthy, uh, make you more trustworthy to client. And of course, sometimes, depending on your business, you wanna have the location. Um, this, even if you're not a location-based service, having a location is, of course, gonna come across uh, more professional and increase that trustworthiness now on top of that you want to have your legals your cookie policy and your privacy policy because this is legally required by you especially if you're in europe and then of course your copyright uh, and any links to developers that have helped you with your site so this is the bare minimum that you want to be adding onto your site this is that something that i use and you can use this for your service pages you can sprinkle this about in different types of pages but i would say start with this and then you can duplicate as many sections out as you want, but here is the template that you can use, and it's gonna get you from zero clicks to an infinite amount of clicks because it is doing everything the right way and you are psychologically doing things the correct way. So if you're interested in learning more about this, I actually am going to go into detail for every single section and show you how I'm gonna be building my new design agency utilizing these steps. So keep an eye out and click the subscribe button because you are gonna see um, this in much further detail. There's gonna be a lot more statistics, a lot more strategies that you can apply to each of these sections so that you can get the highest conversion rate possible. This is just a quick overview of what you need to do for your landing page. So have a look, um, let me know any feedback you have and please leave a like as it really does 
help me create more content for you. I would, be, I would love to see what designs you come up with. So please link me, join the Facebook group that is in the uh, description and we can all help together uh, to create the most amazing content possible. Thank you for your time and I will speak to you guys soon.